Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And so today I wanted to take you through how you can uh, connect to an Amazon Redshift database, all the things you'll need to install. Um, also just show you where you need to get a lot of these configuration details from Redshift. Um, and so we'll come back here in a second to use the Redshift serverless free trial. Um, so I'm actually just gonna do it right now. So I'll just set it up here. Uh, super basic configuration. I won't give all my subnet details. Do, 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 do. And so while this is setting up, so if you know what Redshift is, uh, it is just a serverless uh, database from Amazon um, and it's managed and it can analyze exabytes of data and run really complex analytical queries. Um, so super nice stuff there. And so now at the request of some of my uh, viewers, I'm going to show you, instead of just kind of jumping into the DAG and how you'll set that up, I want to show you really every step of setting up your Airflow environment for this. And this is kind of the format I'll do for future videos. If it doesn't work, let me know and I will change it. Um, but so here, what we're going to do, and this is what I'm always doing when I use, uh, set up a local environment, I'm always using the Astro CLI. And so you can just download this by doing brew install Astro. And what this will allow you to do is spin up a fully dockerized local version of Airflow on your local machine. Um, and then this just means you don't have to plus around with all the networking, setting up different components, just easy way to do it. Um, and so if you're a frequent viewer, you'll know that's already my preferred way. Um, so enough about that. Let's go create a new directory and then install it um, into it. So here I'm just going to create a new directory Then I'm going to CD into that directory. Then I'm going to run Astro dev start and what this will, or Astro dev init, sorry. What this will do is pull in all my files that I need. So if I type LS, you'll see all my local airflow files. And then I'll just open this uh, via my little good old file viewer. And now I have a full local version of airflow right here. Um, and I'll, I can start this up in a second, but before I do, I'm going to want to install some requirements. Um, so if I go over to my requirements file here, I'll install the uh, Apache airflow providers, Amazon package. Um, to my requirements file here. If you're not using this and you want to install locally, you'll need to just pip install it to wherever you're running Airflow. Um, and then after we're done with this, we can start our Airflow project. And so we'll do that by typing astro dev start, hit start, uh, and this will build our local Docker file, install the packages, and then start us up with the local version of Airflow. Um, so I'll let this run for a second. And then once it is, I'm gonna kick us into Airflow UI, it'll produce at localhost 8080. So now we're in our local Airflow UI. So we'll open our connections here, hit plus, and we'll add Redshift default. So here, awesome, everything went smoothly. So we have Redshift installed. So we'll type Redshift default, type it in there. Um, and then we will also just use the, obviously Amazon Redshift connection default as well. Um, we'll need to go over to our actual Redshift environment and get some of our connection details. Um, so that is why I wanted to go over here. So if we go into, so here you'll actually need to create a new namespace, new database. Um, and so here just hitting create as well. Um, and then this will allow you to actually query it. Um, so now let's find these details. And then, so what we'll do here is we actually need to go to open the side menu, go to work group configuration. Um, and then we have this default work group where we can get all of our connection details. So now I won't stay on that page long for obvious reasons, so y'all don't track all my deets. But um, here within our uh, connection menu, so we have Redshift default, connection type, um, we'll have our Redshift endpoint. So we'll put our Redshift endpoint under the host here. So here you're gonna put something like you know your host, you're gonna put your database, call it dev, you're gonna put your user, you're gonna put your password, and then you're gonna put whatever port your uh, thing's running on. So, you know, whatever this is, obviously. So now I'm gonna update this to my real information. And then we're also gonna to have to create one other connection uh, for the other AWS modules that we might use. Um, actually, no, we're not gonna, we're just gonna focus on the Redshift connection. So this is all we'll create. So let me finish updating with my actual credentials. And then we're gonna go back over to Redshift to configure some incoming traffic. And so once we're done adding our uh, AWS Redshift connection details, go back over to your AWS Redshift account. Um, and then you're going to actually want to configure your workspace to be able to accept incoming uh, messages from your local IP. Um, so you'll do that by going into network security um, and then adding additional subnets um, or adding authorization for your um, 
particular IP address to actually access this. So just this is unless you want to make it publicly accessible, um, which is obviously not best practices. So please don't do that and say I told you to. Uh, but obviously you, know, you can if you're just lazy. So now that we have our connection set up, we can go back to our local development environment um, and actually start building our DAG. So to do that, we'll go to our DAGs folder, new file, just call this, uh, what should we call it? Redshift test.py. Um, and then what we'll do is import some of our packages. And by some, I mean a few. Uh, so we have date time, DAG, Redshift SQL operator, obviously to execute SQL within Redshift. Um, and I'll spin down the terminal here and open our, close our files, give us a little cleaner view here of the singular task that we'll be adding. Um, so here we have with DAG, um, so we've imported a Redshift SQL operator, just gonna create a very simple uh, SQL operation. And so what this is doing here, actually, and I'll show you in a second, is we're going to reference a SQL file that we might create. Um, so here we created a DAG, just setting a DAG ID, um, active runs, all the typical stuff. And then what we're gonna do is create just one Redshift SQL operator. So here we just have um, task calling a T. So I'll just call this Redshift tasks to be a little less boring. Um, and we'll use the Redshift SQL operator, um, or I guess it's called FCT listing, um, to do some this FCT listing SQL. Um, and what this will do is then run this SQL statement uh, within the FCT schema within the listing database. Um, and so I don't, I'm going to go show you now the template that we'll use to do this just kind of as an example. Obviously, you know, you might not have this set up already. So, you know, actually, let's just change this. We'll call this basic query and we will add this to, so include example uh, DAG redshift. So that's a template search pass. We'll add it into, so instead, I'm just going to make a little something a little more universal um, and just have it basic query. We'll actually create right here. Um, so it's going to reference in the include directory. So this is another great thing about um, the Astro CLI that makes it easy to include additional files and reference them. Um, so if I go in this include directory and add a file that is just basic query, so uh, let's just call it basic.sql, super cool. Um, and then we're going to just do select all from test. Cool. And so now we can save this. Um, and obviously, oh, I forgot. We're in SQL, so we got to add that good old semicolon. Um, and now this has a reference to, oh, and then also, sorry, I forgot. Let's actually take this out. So it'll just be in our, referencing our basic include directory. Um, and then this will just be referencing our so template search path. Um, let's just do basic SQL, make it easier for us. So this is just allowed to more easily reference that basic query we just made. Um, and then if we kick it over to the Astro or the UI, Okay, so actually something I want to call out because it, my uh, DAG didn't initially render and I wanted full transparency, obviously, in these so you guys know, you know, what problems you might run into. Um, and that is that if you just don't pin the providers package, it won't include the Redshift operator. So make sure you're at 7.4.1. Um, I think earlier package also included, but not really sure what's happening there. Um, so just to note if you run into any issues like I just did. Um, so then without further ado, we can actually switch over to the Airflow UI and just show you running this basic query. So I'm going to trigger it. And then after a little bit of trial and error, you will uh, get the connection working. So I just had to tweak some settings on uh, what database was pointing it to and make sure I actually was creating the right database. Uh, I ended up using some of the Redshift um, dummy data that they incorporate within uh, the query builder to actually do it. Um, so super useful stuff there. Um, and yeah, just in general, not a super, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit annoying to set up just because AWS networking is always a pain, especially if you're working with company resources, there's typically going to be a firewall you have to work around and authenticating it from Airflow properly with the, uh, IP, you know, it's, it's, it can get tricky, uh, in production, but if you're just, you know, trying it out for yourself, pop it open to the public, you know, maybe, or, and just use your username and password for authentication, or you can, you know, still do the IP thing, still go through best practices. Um, and the reason I, there's no uh, execution is I just 
forgot to add a uh, return statement into the logs. Um, and because this is a massive uh, data pile, it's not showing it. So you can also, you know, return this data, pass it wherever, um, execute whatever SQL queries you have. Um, and there's a lot more stuff you can do with Redshift. I wanted to just keep this video in kind of a basic introductory. Um, but if you're interested in this topic, if you liked it, like and subscribe and let me know what other operations you'd like to see me do with Redshift, maybe ETL, whatever. You guys are the users. I am just your humble servant. Um, so without further ado, have a good one. Data guy out.